So I will say one thing there. Uh, this is actually the first time I've given this presentation. I wrote it in approximately the last 30, 45 minutes when I woke up. I haven't presented at all. This was my first run through. And Dave's completely right. The reason I can do that is I've sat there and optimized every aspect of my life. Sat there and optimized the diet, optimized the nutrition, optimized the supplementation. So that way I can pretty much do whatever life throws at me. Asked to give a presentation? All right, no problem. I'm all on that. So I just had a quick question. Sure. Um, I, I have uh, an interesting problem. I fucking hate to cook. I love eating out. I eat out with friends for almost breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have the finances to support it. So, but, and in the past, the, the, there's been a run where I ate heavy on meats, things like uh, barbecue joints mm -hmm. with no, ad, no, no additions to the, to the meat, just dry rub. Um, what are some other ideas for me about where, where can I go to get as, as, I guess, primal as possible? That's a great question, and it's something I run into all the time. As I said, I'm a nomad. I, so far this year, I've racked up probably 90,000 miles. Literally, I'm in a new city every couple of days. And there's some things you can do. Again, intermittent fasting makes it a lot easier because you don't have to be eating every couple of hours. So it's not like, okay, I've only got crappy McDonald's joints. Some other things I end up doing is I travel with a little BPA-free container of Kerrygold butter. Uh, I do Kerrygold the unsalted kind because one, Kerrygold is grass-fed, which is fantastic. Plus, the unsalted version is cultured, which ends up increasing the amount of butyric acid in there. Again, more benefits. I travel with a little a go tube container of MCT oil, and I pick the best options that I have possible. If you're living that lifestyle, you're traveling, you don't have the best choices, you do end up having to pick and choose. So when I'm out, I'm often asking for meat, I'm asking for fish, especially when I can find it. I didn't get into this, but from a diet aging perspective, you wanna look into your omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid ratio. Pretty much all my diets targeting towards keeping insulin and glucose levels down or keeping chronic inflammation down. Uh, so because of that, I end up eating a lot of fish, I eat larger meals, because you end up still having to get those calories in. It's just that I'm compressing the amount of time I'm eating. And you end up looking at things that make cooking a lot easier. I'll sous vide a lot of meat if I'm living in one spot. Uh, I will also end up just cooking a ton of stuff at once and then just eating it next couple of days. Uh, again, doing the bulletproof coffee thing will end up increasing, because right there I'm eating 1,000 calories, and that's, again, pretty easy to travel with. And I can talk more about it offline, or if you've got questions, just ping me. Did you have a question? Yeah, sorry. I uh, just want to see if you had any <clears throat> advice for the transition period, getting into intermittent fasting, when you like still get the cravings and the hunger. Because I know when I'm really hungry, I can't concentrate. Oh, definitely. I mean, it makes perfect sense. That's why I said, I don't say just, hey, you immediately hear my presentation, you think it's fantastic, and immediately go jump in and stop eating, because think about it, if you told your coworkers to do that, they may get pretty mad and uh, may not be so good for a stress perspective. That's why I highly advocate starting off with a low-carb, paleo, bulletproof executive, et cetera, style diet. What you're doing is you're taking some time first to transition your body from eating what it's used to to eating lower carbohydrate so your body is used to using its fat sources as an energy source. Once you get that, then you can start putting in that intermittent fasting, putting in that modified intermittent fasting. Because face it, you've been eating probably all of your life this way. You don't want to just change that overnight. You'll end up sliding back. You'll fe start feeling miserable. The other thing to th keep in mind is it does get better. That's why I said I've, I've looked into the research. After a couple of weeks of intermittent fasting, your hunger levels go significantly down towards your baseline. Because the thing is, most of us are not used to being hungry. Most of us, we're lucky. We live in a Western world. We can get food pretty much whenever we want it. What we call is hunger isn't hunger at all. Part of it is just frankly getting used to it, manning up. Um, just with the intermittent fasting uh, mm -hmm. protocols, do you uh, stick to one protocol or do you shift? So like some days you'll be like, I'm not on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I don't eat breakfast. Uh, are you flexible with that or do you have a strict protocol that you follow consistently um, throughout, throughout the year? So I'm personally pretty variable with that. And a lot of it is looking at my life. 
part of why I end up doing intermittent fasting and everything is to make my life easier so that way I can deal with what gets thrown at me. I work as a computer security professional, I'm a consultant, so a lot of times it's, oh, we're going out for lunch, they're paying for it, fantastic, it's Italian. Guess what, I'm not gonna eat that. So, that's great, it's a fast meal. Same thing, I'm traveling. I've got a bunch of plane rides in a row. Hey, I may be sitting in first class, they may give me some great meals, but guess what, I'm not gonna eat that. So I don't. So I tend to be personally pretty variable. If I had more of a steady static life, then yeah, I'd probably program it in a little bit better. Uh, I do end up tracking a lot of data about myself. I'm a quantified self nerd. The more data I have, the better. I've got a Zio and a Fitbit, and Dave will talk a lot more about those sorts of things that you could use if you wanted to program it in. But me personally, I'm very variable because hunter-gatherer environment. You never know what might life be throwing at you. Deal with it, adapt to it.